Hello, I'm Mark Hines. I'm in the Arctic Circle, just outside Rovaniemi in Finland. And I'm going to do an unboxing of the Kavea Booster Plus One multi-fuel stove. Uh, so the only things I need other than what's in this box uh, is either liquid fuel or gas uh, and something to light it with. So let's uh, make a start. So inside we have the stove itself, a box for it, a little carry case, uh, some instructions. Uh, there is a, a spare parts and maintenance kit in here, it's got a few seals in there, it's got a nozzle and a couple of other bits. Uh, we've got the fuel bottle. the pump. We have a maintenance tool. I'll do the maintenance in a separate video. And just when you thought you were done with the excitement, if we can just take this out. We have a nice little base to set the stove up on and uh, windshield. Okay. Okay, so that is the box. Now let's make a start on getting it going. So uh, we'll want to use this foil base. There are two in mine. The stove has the fuel line already attached. So let's just unwrap that. Uh, and with the stove we just pull out the legs and that's the stand ready and then uh, we have a little bit of information on there which we'll delicately remove to save setting fire to it. And then with the stove we'll just unclip these And there, there it is. So the first and easiest way of getting this stove working is to just use a normal gas canister. Make sure with your fuel line that this is turned clockwise so it is off when we start. And then we'll just screw the gas canister in thus. Okay, okay. Now the gas is coming out of a nozzle underneath and I'm just going to uh, make sure I can access that. So, opening here. And that is the sound of this stove working. So we can now use the uh, control on the fuel line if we want to increase or decrease. And that is, uh, that's working quite nicely. Okay, that's the easy way. So I'll uh, now have a go using the liquid gas. Um, and just as a safety point here, uh, I am in the Arctic. Uh, it's not a cold day. Uh, I've been out for some hours. Um, but uh, if you were out, say, uh, sort of temperatures where contact with uh, metal is going to be a problem, you'll want to be wearing gloves. Um, and importantly, with this uh, liquid fuel, um, it will be whatever the temperature is, uh, so it's not going to be freezing. Um, uh, it could be minus 40 degrees, it's still going to be liquid. So if that actually came in contact with your skin, uh, you would get a contact frostbite. So uh, always wear touch gloves, just thin gloves, when you're using this in the cold. Now, actually it's quite a mild day today, uh, which is why I'm not wearing them, but I'll do, uh, do videos when it's a bit colder and I'm uh, properly dressed for it. 
So, uh, to begin with, just take the lid off the fuel. Um, now, on the uh, fuel bottle, you've got a uh, got this dent, uh, indentation all the way around. That is uh, to indicate the maximum fill level for the fuel. There we go, that's as full as that needs to be. Probably left the iron on. Right. Okay. I'm actually going to put gloves on, just for the look of the thing, uh, and show it can be done. With the uh, fuel pump, there's a little protector on the end, so we can just remove that. And then we've got a little filter over the, uh, the intake for fuel there. So let's put that on. Okay, and now we'll attach this the same way as we would do with a gas canister. So, holding this over one end, we've then got. Um, this is where the uh, fuel line is going to attach, and then we've got this here, uh, which we can turn to uh, tighten up the fuel line or to untighten it when we're finished. Okay, and now that's nice and tight on there. Again, the controller for the fuel line is uh, closed. Stove's all set up, ready to go. Um, and now all we need to do is to get some pressure in here. So it's, uh, it's just liquid and a bit of air at the top. And what we're gonna do is use the pump to increase the pressure, uh, which is then gonna drive the fuel through the fuel line. So just a dozen or so pumps and you should have noticed that it's kind of building up a bit of pressure when you're doing it. If it's not, um, we need to find out why that is or so do separate maintenance on that. Now, with the, uh, the little controller for the fuel line, when we open this, we're gonna see um, the fuel's gone through and it's gonna come out of a very small nozzle just at the bottom. So you see this brass looking nozzle right at the base so when um, I open the fuel line, uh, a few drips are going to come spurting out of there. I'm going to release to get some fuel. And then a couple of drops have just come out. And now what we do is that's closed off and there's really just, just a few drops have come out of there. Okay, so with that lit, I'm just going to lay this down now. There's a, there's a stand on the fuel bottle, so um, it can be laid down. Okay, so we've now got some nice yellow flame coming out. I'm going to lay this fuel bottle down on its side. Stand underneath to support it. And what's happening is that this yellow flame, which is just liquid fuel, is heating up the fuel line that goes over the top of the stove um, and it's heating up the liquid fuel that's in there. Okay so what's happening now is that we're burning through the last of the fuel that's in there and before that extinguishes I'm just going to open up the fuel line. Okay, 
So it's hard to see the flames now because they're burning as blue flames. Um, so once that yellow flame has heated up the liquid fuel that's in there, uh, it then starts to burn blue. So initially you only need a few drops just to heat up that uh, fuel line and then just before the uh, flame goes out just open up the fuel again and uh, there should be enough heat in there that it's then the gas that's, uh, that's burning. So there you go, that's the unboxing, it's the use of the uh, normal gas canister and with liquid gas and just the same again you can control the heat using the controller on the fuel line. Close that off now. Um, so once you're closed, uh, once you've closed everything off and uh, you're ready to pack things away, you can pack it as it is, and there are people who will do that and maybe use a board to put it on and hold everything in position. Um, personally, I prefer to just pack everything away. Um, so I'll uh, go through doing that. Um, now, one of the challenges here is that we don't want to get covered in any of the fuel that's inside this bottle that's under pressure. So we need to release the pressure and there are a couple of ways that we can do that. So the first is, just stand this up, is that I can open this again. Now if I do that it's going to send fuel back through uh, the stove and it's going to cover the stove in fuel. So this is only really an option if you don't care about that and uh, if you're happy to give the stove a bit of a clean before you pack it away. So we'll just open this. And we can hear and potentially see that fuel coming out. There we go. And now that's, that's taken most of the, uh, the pressure out. And I'll close that off so as to uh, reduce the amount of fuel that's going everywhere. For the next bit I'm just going to put my uh, gloves on but before I do I'll just uh, remove the fuel line now. So just unscrew there we go. It's a good idea to give the stove a clean don't pack it away into its little case until you've given it time to cool down, otherwise you will have uh, a very pretty case that has become a melted pretty case. Um, so with this, I've just put my gloves on, and ordinarily you should be wearing quite thin gloves that allow you to do everything without needing to remove them. Um, so holding on to the pump, uh, I'll now just very gently, just give it a quarter turn, And it just lets a little bit more fuel out, just a bit more gas, and then uh, ease off a bit more. There we go. So now this is ready to be put away. I'll just pop the orange cap on the end just to keep. Uh, that clean at the end and I'll put the cap on the top of the fuel bottle and so I'm surrounded by snow just a bit of snow to help clear off any fuel that might be in that bottle and uh, there we go